Kamiansky. And I'm Meg Knox. And this is a CNN Special Report on global climate change. Before we, begin to, before we get into exactly what actions and processes are greatly contributing to the rise of temperatures, it is critically important to understand what exactly is leading to global warming, the greenhouse effect. When you think of a greenhouse, an image of a hot enclosed glass building filled with plants probably comes to mind. And the names aren't just the same by coincidence. When the sun's rays shine down on Earth, about 70% of their energy remains on the planet, absorbed by land, oceans, plants, and animals, for example. The remaining 30% is reflected back into space by clouds or ice caps, for example. This 70% absorbed within Earth's surface is not permanent, however, as much of this heat is often radiated back out, cooling back down the Earth's surface. Some of that released radiation makes it into space, and the rest ends up getting reflected back down to Earth when it hits certain things in the atmosphere, known as greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane gas, water vapor, and nitrous oxide. Because there's more energy coming in through the atmosphere than there is going out, this in turn means that the planet Earth is now warmer than outer space. To a certain degree, the greenhouse effect is necessary for mild life conditions to exist on this Earth as scientists estimate that without an atmosphere, the surface of Earth would be about 54 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than it is now. That would bring the Earth to about 5 degrees Fahrenheit. It is moderation, however, that is required to maintain these mild conditions, as increased emissions of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide, are very rapidly speeding up the process. Okay. There are four major greenhouse gases, or categories of them, which in order of prevalence are carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons, also known as CFCs. Different gases function at different levels of effectiveness and persist in the trapping the Earth's heat, so both quality and quantity matter. Carbon dioxide makes up 84% of greenhouse gases and has a bit of a complicated lasting expectancy. Mm, can you explain that a little bit? It, uh, yes, exactly. So this gas is not destroyed mm. over time, but instead moves along different parts of the ocean, atmosphere, land system, and often can last in the Earth's atmosphere for several thousand years. Oh. So you know what? The, the carbon dioxide being released from your car today will be lasting in the atmosphere for thousands of years. Interesting, good, I know. Good thing I drive a Prius. Environmentally friendly. Boom. <laughs> anyway, the, most, the next most prevalent greenhouse gas is methane, or CH4, which makes up about 9% of the total greenhouse gases and has a lasting, lasting life expectancy of 12 years. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Nitrous oxide, or N2O, accounts for about 5% and lasts approximately 12 years as well, so very similar to methane. Mm -hmm. But then finally, chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, makes up only 2% of all greenhouse gases, Pretty small. but but has an expectancy in the atmosphere of anywhere from 270 to 50,000 years. Wow, 50,000 years. They're just Shocking. lifetimes I know. and lifetimes. I know, wow. so you should not use those aerosol cans. Anyway, it's important to note that all these percentages of prevalence are taken without water vapor, otherwise the largest greenhouse gas is ignored due to the fact that water is naturally occurring in the, in the atmosphere. Anthropomorphic activities, such as the burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, and slash and burn techniques, contribute to the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Globally, livestock is a primary contributor of methane due to animals' natural digestive processes releasing methane to the atmosphere. So yes, although um, it is a natural process for, or for livestock to produce methane, the amount of methane we're producing, because there's such... It's overexploited. It's overexploited. There yeah. are two... Mm -hmm. Too many people are eating so much red meat. Anyway, in fact, as production has grown so rapidly, several greenhouse gases has, have increased as much as 25% since the beginning of large-scale industrialization, about 150 years ago. Pre-industrial levels of gases were at just 280 ppm, so about 0.028% of air, several decades ago, as compared to today, where... It's about 390 ppm and about 0.039% of the air, which is just a dramatic increase in the last 100, 150 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you aren't convinced yet, here's a bit of evidence that explains that the greenhouse effect and global warming is taking place today, right as we speak. Most obviously, global climate change can be seen directly through a drastic increase in, pe in temperatures. 2010 was the hottest year recorded, and 9 out of 10 of the warmest years have been recorded since 2001. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, otherwise known as the IPCC, has and will continue to release reports predicting global temperature increases. In the 21st century, the IPCC predicts that average global temperatures will increase an estimate of 2 to 11.5 degrees. 
Sea levels have risen about 17 centimeters, or 6.7 inches, in the past century, and the rate in the last decade is nearly double that of the last century. The rise of temperatures in oceans have shown a 0.3% increase in the top 700 meters since 1969. Greenland and Antarctic sheets have drastically shrunk in size, which have also contributed to a rise in sea levels. Data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment show that Greenland lost 36 to 60 cubic miles of ice per year between 2002 and 2006, while Antarctica lost 36 cubic miles of ice between 2002 and 2005. And it isn't only temperature that is changing with our Earth's waters, as its acidification is becoming a growing problem. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, again about 150 years ago, the acidity of the surface ocean's waters have increased by about 30% as a result of more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, largely due to human activities and hence more being absorbed by the oceans. The amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the upper layer of the oceans is estimated to be increasing by about 2 billion tons per year. Along with the evidence my co-anchor Samantha Kuniansky just reported on, here are three major environmental impacts of global warming. One of the greatest impacts of global warming will likely bring, and has already started to be seen, is a shift towards more extreme weather conditions. Weather is caused due to uneven heating of the Earth's surface, where wind is then carried between. When warmer air temperatures exist, there is also a higher concentration of water being carried through the air. Though it is, th though it is thought that global warming creates storms, that is simply a common misconception. Warming, global warming, global climate change intensify storms and often make them more frequent. A second effect is the decrease in overall coral coverage due to coral bleaching as a result of climate change, or more specifically, an increase in water temperatures. Coral are among the most sensitive animals and thus require extreme constant temperatures to avoid environmental stress. Coral's bright array of colors arise from algae living symbiotically inside of them. The corals get food and the algae get protection. Though the animal is also a filter feeder, the algae provides a large source of its nutrients. When temperatures rise, the stress causes the coral to expel the algae living within, thus resulting in the white color which now covers much of the ocean's floors. And as we just found out, 60% of all the coral reefs in the Bahamas are have been bleached and no longer have that vibrant color. 60%. And now we're not going to be able to see that anymore. It's because unless Terrible. they can find another algae that's more heat resistant, the corals will likely not take any algae back in and exactly. then they will stay bleached. I know, it's, it's heartbreaking. A third effect of global, warming, of global climate change is the overall effect on animals and biodiversity. At, here are just two examples. We can see the shifting migration patterns of many species of animals. Some butterflies, foxes, and alpine plants have moved farther north to higher, cooler areas. In Palos Verdes, our own hometown, we can see this exact effect through whale migration, as our local species started its migration much earlier than recorded in the past several years. Yeah. Secondly, groups of animals, such as amphibians, are particularly sensitive to environmental disturbances, which has caused them to be the most frequently endangered. These amphibians, as well as other organisms, face stresses that they are unable to cope with, they often require or accumulate diseases that they would ordinarily be able to fight off, and thus they are more endangered than other species. So as we've said, much of this increase in global warming is done so due to human activities. We've self-induced our planet to become this place that is rapidly increasing in temperature and obviously negatively affecting our environment. So here are a few suggestions of how we can change this process and how you at home can change your ways a bit to make the world a bit more sustainable. As we've previously mentioned, the increase in global temperatures is largely due to the increase, increase in greenhouse gas emissions, many of which are caused by humans. In order to slow down the greenhouse effect, we must attempt to lower all greenhouse gases, but focus largely on carbon dioxide. One way to cut down on CO2 emissions is to switch from petroleum oil to natural gas. The cleanest burning fossil fuel, natural gas, emits almost 30% less carbon dioxide than oil, and just under 45% less than coal, so it's even a better solution than that. It is, and also renewable energy. There's another Renewable another energy, hydroelectric power, wind power. You have so many options. The fact that methane is one of the primary components of natural gas, which is also a greenhouse gas, further complicates the situation though, because you might question if the methane release is more potent than the carbon dioxide release. But studies have been done, however, to see if the higher levels of methane emissions and severely decreased levels of carbon dioxide emissions made natural gas a more environmentally friendly option. It was concluded that the benefits of lower carbon dioxide emission levels significantly 
outweighed the increase in methane emissions in one study. Very interesting. We could also take part in cap and trade or charge carbon or pollutant taxes on those heavy users. Trees play a crucial role in maintaining a constant temperature by absorbing vast amounts of CO2, which leads to the point that deforestation must be halted and reforestation should and must be supported. And actually some companies now I have heard of are trying to make a promise to replant a tree for every tree that they cut down. So any small effort will help, even a few. Exactly. Definitely support those companies. Moderation. Exactly. Exactly. Finally, eating vegetarian or decreasing meat consumption, as in our meatless Mondays at our own cafeteria at Chadwick, can help reduce overall methane emissions. And let's, I just want to leave you on this really impactful point. One, one final point. One final point. According to some of those innovative scientific, scientific research, in order to avoid climate-induced disaster, carbon emissions in industrialized countries, as in the United States, Great Britain, need to be reduced by at least 90%. Wait, like 90%? 90% in the coming years. More specifically, by 2050, in order to halt disaster and to make sure our planet is, more, is better for generations to come. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, we hope that you have enjoyed our short segment on climate change, and that you've learned a thing or two, and more so that you will take some sort of action, whether it is reducing meat consumption on one day of the week, whether it is drinking an algae, drinking an algae, cutting down on hairspray, using paper instead of styrofoam cups, recycling. There are so many options that you can choose to make the planet a little bit better. And this has been a CNN report on global climate change.